Welcome to this short video presentation of the Kai Late Breaking Work, Investigating Fubbing in Everyday Life, Challenges and Lessons for Future Research. As the title suggests, our late breaking work is concerned with fubbing, which describes the act of snubbing others or disengaging from a social interaction in favor of engaging with the smartphone, something that most of us probably already did or experienced sometimes. And indeed, fubbing can be considered a quite common phenomenon. And this is a problem because fubbing was found to be related to negative interpersonal and mental health outcomes across different types of social relationships. This is why we propose to not only aim to design for interaction of humans with the smartphone, but also consider interaction of humans with other humans. And the first necessary prerequisite to do so is to be able to detect fubbing behavior. Because only if we can reliably detect it, we can better understand fubbing or even trigger interventions. But how to detect fubbing? So far, this was done mostly using one-time global self-report questionnaires, observations, or methods from the spectrum of ambulatory assessment. But all of these approaches come with some problems or limitations. Self-reported questionnaires usually assess self-concepts rather than actual behaviors, such that there often is a mismatch. Manual observations are not feasible on a large scale, and self-reports often are limited when it comes to the proper recall of behaviors, for example, when being asked about smartphone usage throughout the day. So in our late-breaking work, we propose and evaluate a new approach to detect fubbing, and we present the challenges and lessons for future research we came across on the way. For our approach, we combined experience sampling with smartphone sensing. So more precisely, we repeatedly asked our participants about past face-to-face -face social interactions and then used smartphone logs to detect smartphone usage during these interactions. To evaluate this assessment prototype, we descriptively analyzed the fubbing behaviors over four weeks in a 320 participant sample and compared them with their fubbing scores from the generic scale of fubbing, which is a common self-report fubbing measure. And this is what we found. First of all, fubbing was very common for our participants. So here we have two days of three participants and we can see that there was at least some short smartphone usage during most social interactions. We also see that the amount of fubbing differs both across and within participants. When we then compared our behavioral fubbing proxies with the subdomain of the generic scale of fubbing, we see that the correlations are comparably low, which however is a perfectly common result when comparing self-reports with actual behaviors. These results made us derive the following three lessons and challenges for fubbing research. First of all, we should focus on detecting social interactions. As we saw, global self-report questionnaires assess something different than behavioral fubbing. We, however, aim to assess behavioral fubbing. And for this, we relied on self-reported social interactions. So one next step and challenge will be to passively detect social interactions instead of continuing to rely on self-reports. Second, we should try to distinguish between fubbing and shared phone use. The latter can be considered the more positive version of using one's phone during social interactions, for example, when watching a video together, and we only want to focus on fubbing. For this, we could derive indicators for disengagement from social situations, for example, using eye tracking, or use the other information provided by smartphone usage logs, for example, which apps were used during a social interaction. Lastly, once we have a better understanding of fubbing and are able to reliably detect it in the wild, we can aim to design fubbing-aware technology and even concepts that counteract the negative effects of fubbing. This could, for example, be applications that limit technoference in social interactions and as such facilitate human-human -human interactions. And with this, my talk has come to an end. And anybody interested in more details can find the full late-breaking work using the DOI or QR code in the top left. And I would like to thank my co-authors for the collaboration and their support and all of you for watching. Cheers.